recreating cinematic looking footage can be a challenging task. In order to do so, the first and most important thing is to have a good eye. A lot of people think the second most important thing is having a good camera and that'll automatically let them create better content. Well, I strongly disagree. I'm convinced that if you just even have a mediocre camera but great lenses, you'll be able to create optically more compelling content than the guy with the big shiny rig. What up guys, welcome back to our episode, my name is Eddie Bear and today we are taking a look at budget cinema lenses from Sirui called Nightwalker. Now you might be wondering why even consider cinema lenses? While the new RF lenses from Canon are amazing when it comes to their overall sharpness, however if you want to have a more quote cinematic look, you're looking for glass that can give you a certain softness while still being sharp at the same time. Also another very important advantage of cine lenses is that Normally they have a better low light performance and in the case of the Nightwalker lenses from Siroy, they even have an aperture of T1.2. But before I get too deep into today's video, full disclosure, Siroy was kind enough to supply me with one of their 24mm Nightwalker lenses, so thank you Siroy for making this video possible. To show you how the 24mm Nightwalker lens performs, I'll show you a bunch of test footage shot on the Canon EOS R5, the Red Komodo and I also compare the footage with the Canon RF 35mm f1.8 lens to show you the different look and feel that the lens can offer. You especially need to be aware that the Nightwalker lens will behave very different on a Super 35 camera like the Red Komodo and a full frame body like the EOS R5. This has to do with the sensor size and depending what kind of camera mount you are using, your results may also vary. If you are using the Nightwalker lenses on a full frame camera body like the Canon EOS R5, you will get vignetting. However, if you zoom in far enough to get rid of the vignetting, you end up with the same result as if you would be using a 24mm lens on the EOS R5. However, if you're using the 24mm Nightwalker on a red Komodo, you will have a slightly wider field of view than if you're using a 24mm Canon lens. So just be aware if you're shooting with a full frame camera, you'll have to crop in manually in post or you turn on movie cropping in the settings of your camera. In the case of the EOS R5, you pretty much end up with the equivalent of an RF 35mm lens result. By the way, I have a bonus tip for you if you're wondering why you can't engage recording on your Canon camera in combination with a manual lens. Fire up the camera's menu and go all the way back to the orange menu to level 4. Select release shutter without lens, make sure to enable it and boom you can record with a manual lens. Now let's talk about lens characteristics and how it's able to render certain situations. For reference, I will compare the Siroy 24mm Nightwalker to the Canon RF 35mm lens. Let's begin with bokeh. In general, I would say that the Nightwalker lenses seem to be more soft than the Canon stock lenses, which personally I prefer. However, cinematic look always comes down to preference, but you can decide for yourself. I think that the bokeh balls on the left side look superb. And with that in mind, here's a short message from our sponsor of today's video. This video is brought to you by Lexar and their new NM790 NVMe SSDs. These SSDs are PCI Express Gen 4 and can deliver read speeds up to 7400 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 6500 megabytes per second. No matter whether you're a content creator or a gamer with significant storage needs, the Lexar NM790 series got you covered all the way up to 4 terabytes of capacity. You can find the links to the Lexar NVMe SSDs in the description and thank you Lexar for sponsoring today's video. God rays and sun rays, call them as you like them, I think Surai does a great job rendering them nice and soft. In general you can say that the Surai lens gives you a great sweet spot between sharpness and softness, so it is a more artistic lens than the stock Canon lenses. You already witnessed this sweet spot in one of the opening shots where you can see that everything that is in focus is nice and crisp but still not too sharp and everything that is out of focus has a really nice softness to it. If there is a lot of light in the footage, it almost feels like there is a mist filter applied to it. And you can also notice that the Nightwalker lens seems to be more on the warmer side as the Canon lenses are always a little bit colder. I also should point out that I barely seen any fringing or chromatic aberration in all the footage I took. Now let's talk about focusing. 
The minimum focus distance for a 24mm Nightwalker lens is 30cm. Focusing the Nightwalker lens feels extremely intuitive and you don't necessarily need a lens control system in order to pull focus. Even handheld, you can quite easily focus the lens and use it in a run and gun scenario. In this case, focus peaking is your friend and having a bigger monitor is definitely a big plus. And that brings us to the build quality of the lens. The whole lens body is made out of metal. The focus and aperture ring both run very smooth, so it's quite easy to adjust manually or with the help of an additional focus motor. Size-wise, it compares to a regular RF lens and therefore isn't as hefty as a traditional cinema lens, which makes it quite comfortable to work with. Another advantage over cinema lenses is the fact that the Nightwalker lenses come with a 67mm filter thread so you won't need a softbox in order to use filters. And of course if you're not a Canon RF mount shooter, the Nightwalker lenses are also available for E, MFT, X and L mount. With that said, what are your thoughts on the Siri Nightwalker lenses? How do you think they did hold up to the Canon RF 35mm lens? Let me know in the comments. So this will be it for today, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.